a KQED HD production. For the animal kingdom, food is purely sustenance. The lion devours his meat raw. The gorilla is content with a meal of fruit, leaves, or insects. Whatever is available and abundant is the menu of the day. But not for the human animal. We prefer our meals seared, sauteed, and seasoned. We turn grapes into wine. We marinate meat in sweet and smoky sauces. We grind dried bark, roots, seeds, and herbs, and mix them into spicy combinations that tantalize our palates. Our passion for enhancing the flavor of our food dates back thousands of years. It sent explorers on distant voyages and built empires around the globe. This desire for the sensual is an integral part of being human. We enrich everyday life with our senses, with music and art, and with food that is not just sustaining, but delicious and memorable. The most important thing that I tell my students is that the most important tools that they have in the kitchen are their senses. Um, you can strip away all the microplaners and fancy uh, equipment and everything else, um, but your senses are the most important tools. Understanding how the senses work and their relationship in perceiving flavor is a puzzle that inspires chefs and intrigues scientists. Until recently, sensory science was a little studied field, but now even cooking schools are teaching flavor physiology. We often use the word flavor to describe how something tastes, but taste and flavor are not the same thing. Taste happens only in the mouth. Flavor is far more complex. Flavor is a combination of smell, taste, texture. The crumbliness of the apple crisp in your mouth, the heat of the, or the coolness, if it's a warm pie or a cold pie, all of those things are part of flavor. It's not just the flavor of the food, but it's also the, the um, the, the situation, the setting, the emotional feelings that you have, is it very pleasant? Is it an un unpleasant thing? Does it remind you of good meals that you've had in the past? Flavor is a multi-dimensional experience. Taste, smell, spice, texture, temperature, setting, and memory, all these things combine to create flavor. And each one has its own complex mechanism. The sensory systems tend to be sort of divided Taste is kept separate from smell and from touch and from temperature and from spiciness all the way up to the cortex. So how does it all work? Let's start with taste and the chemical reaction that happens when a piece of food enters the mouth. Our tongue is covered with bumps called papillae. Inside these are the taste buds and inside those are taste receptor cells. The receptor cells react to five basic tastes, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami, or savory. These cells send their signals along nerve pathways to the brainstem, and from there, up into the brain. There's a path through the thalamus into the so-called gustatory cortex. That's the part of the brain that's involved in, in sensing and perceiving taste. Taste is our evolutionary survival mechanism. Bitter and sour helped us recognize and reject poisons. Sweet and salty meant nutritious carbohydrates. Smell is less important for survival, but it's essential for pleasure. About 95% of what we think is taste is actually smell. If you take a jelly bean and, and taste it um, with your nose pinched, you will only have basic tastes that you will perceive. You will taste sourness and sweetness. You release, your, you release your nose and all of a sudden all the aromas and the flavor of the jelly bean is there. Millions of odor receptors send their signals along the olfactory nerve into the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb, which is right up here, is enveloped by the emotional part of the brain. You have a very direct connection between when you smell it and it going into the brain. And so we respond to odors in a very visceral way. And especially odor memories we make as children are incredibly vivid. 
many, 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 many years later. Another part of the flavor equation is touch. This includes texture, temperature, and spice. A slippery oyster, a sizzling stew, a red-hot chili. Signals are sent along the trigeminal nerves responsible for sensations in the face. These three distinct nerve pathways, taste, smell, and touch, meet in the prefrontal cortex and the insula, where we identify flavor. But flavor perception is more complex than just knowing what we're eating. Do we like it? Does it trigger feelings or memories? The gustatory pathway and smell pathways, they also have access to other parts of the brain, sort of older parts of the brain that are involved in emotions. There's linkages between different parts of the brain at every level. As scientists decode how our senses work and how we perceive flavor, cooks are taking that knowledge, combining it with an understanding of food chemistry, and performing alchemy in the kitchen. A true culinary artist wants to express their ideas through their medium, their ingredients. And in order to really know their ingredients, they have to understand some of the underlying physiochemical properties of these ingredients that elicit these sublime responses that people experience at the table. Christopher Costow is the chef at Meadowood, a Michelin-starred restaurant in the heart of Napa Valley. Costow believes in cooking what's seasonal and local. He's also interested in pushing culinary boundaries. By artfully using food chemistry to blend traditional and unconventional ingredients, he creates dishes that arouse all the senses. We don't begin with the science. We look at first what we want to do as far as what textures we want to create, um, what contrasting temperatures, what flavors. I tell my cooks that we want to be evocative as opposed to provocative. So the science is a means by which to create memorable flavors and textures. A perfect example is Costao's molten Parmesan tortellini. If you were to simply use Parmesan and use that to put in a tortellini, it'd be granular and oily and not very nice. So we need to figure out a way to make it liquid when warm, but not too liquid. To achieve the desired effect, Costow melts Parmesan and cream, then adds regular gelatin along with a thickener called gelon gum. Gelon is a man-made bacteria that allows him to control the texture and firmness of the Parmesan center. So this is gonna go in the fridge. The gelatin and gelon perform exactly as Costow intended, molten and creamy, a delectable explosion of Parmesan. With the tortellini, Costow plays with ingredients. His skirt steak, however, plays with perception. The meat is prepared to give the impression that it's been charred or blackened. The skirt steak is cooked sous vide, poached with a vacuum seal, then brushed with a glaze of granulated charred onions, garlic, and brown sugar. If we were to simply char the meat, it would gray and become dry and be not very nice. The meat is quickly seared to blacken the onion glaze. We're not gonna do it very long because it's gonna create that bitter flavor that we are obviously trying very much to avoid. So we obviously have the effect of it being charred and we have sort of the fun flavors of it being charred without the bitterness, without the sort of acrid flavor. Understanding the elements of flavor allows chefs and scientists to more accurately identify our likes and dislikes. Billions of dollars depend on it. What we like is what we buy. In the Sensory Science Department at the University of California at Davis, students participate in what's called sensory descriptive analysis panels, where they learn to measure sensations. When we use humans as measuring devices, we have the problem, it's a good problem, but, but they have brains, <laughs> and they have memories, and they have diverse sensitivities. So in order to actually use a human being as a measuring device, you have to have groups of human beings. The panelists, in this case a group of future winemakers, are presented with a selection of wines and asked to identify everything that they can smell and taste. May I get some of uh, the hint of uh, floral? And a light uh, citrus fruit, probably orange. I got a lot of uh, 
cherry, strawberry. After multiple tastings, the panel will finally agree on the terms that accurately identify the many components of the wine. The panel's analysis can be used to guide winemakers who are looking for a certain flavor profile, or grape growers who want to cultivate specific qualities in their crop. But this kind of flavor decoding isn't just for wine. It impacts what you buy in the grocery store. It impacts the way that they breed new lettuces. But it could also be in a non-food product like toilet paper or a food product like meat. Any product you use that you interact with could be evaluated by a sensory scientist. Making our senses happy. It's all part of our quest for the sublime. I think by playing on the edges of science and food production, chefs who are trying to experiment with how the senses work in their food make life much more interesting and quite magical. 